still trying to find out exactly what caused those rolling blackouts that many of us experienced almost two weeks ago. Today, the leaders of the Texas electricity market answered questions from state senators. Our Reagan Hackman has been following this story since those blackouts happened and joins us live now from the state capitol with the latest. Reagan? Well, guys, the head of ERCOT told the uh, Senate committee today that if this exact th same thing were to happen again next week, the state, ERCOT, and all the electrical providers in the state would be much better prepared. Now, so far, the head of ERCOT, the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission, and the chairman of the Texas Railroad Commission have, an have answered questions from state senators. The big theme so far, weatherization of power plants across the state. Now, we know that roughly 82 generators either went offline or were unable to start because of the extreme cold temperatures. We learned today that many of those plants have weatherization plans, but those plans aren't necessarily winterization plans. Many of the South Texas plants' weatherization plans are geared toward hurricanes and not cold weather, and that contributed to some of the power plant outages a couple of weeks ago. Now, details about those weatherization plans have not been made public because many, if not most, are confidential and are not public records, according to ERCOT. It also appears older power plants across the state held up better than their newer counterparts. I don't know that you will ever be in a situation where you can promise that uh, there's perfection in those systems, but it is unacceptable to not be prepared for whether you know is going to happen. It is now, we also learned for the first time today some of the names of those power plants that went offline. All along, ERCOT, which is the state's grid operator, has been saying that that list is confidential. But today, they released 23 out of the, out of the roughly 80 names. And we do know this. Uh, all of them except one are powered by natural gas. And five of them are here in the central Texas area. None of them are Austin Energy plants. Uh, four of them are located in Hayes County. And one of them is located in Bastrop County. Reporting live from the state capitol, Reagan Hackelman, KXA in Austin News. A lot to go over. Reagan, thank you.